Hey everyone, Brady from TextureLabs.org here back in Adobe Photoshop. I took a few months off of the channel and redesigned the whole Texture Labs website. One of those things that just had to get done, but I'm excited to be back here on the channel with what I think is a very cool, really powerful technique in Photoshop. And it's the answer to a question I've gotten a handful of times, kind of phrased in different ways that asks, how can we create a gradient map adjustment layer that instead of blending smoothly between each color, instead uses kind of noise or grain shading to blend the colors together. And I appreciate that people who have asked this question have the intuition that this would be a really cool effect. And I'm happy to say that yes, there is a nice clear way to do it. And yes, it's a really, really cool effect. And it allows you to sort of instantly create this colorful grain shaded look. Very effective for creating everything from vintage movie posters to colorful graphic shading effects. And it's a pretty simple setup that just requires a couple of layers that sit on top of your image. So let's get into Photoshop and check out how this works. All right, we've got the Bride of Frankenstein here. And in case you're interested, all I've done is clipped out this old photo, applied some shadows and highlights to bring out the details in the shadows, then some oil paint and camera raw filter to smooth out the whole thing, make it a little bit more gradient-ish, and some curves to give it a little more contrast. Then we've got this gradient and the sphere over here. These will just help to illustrate how this effect works. Now, the first thing we need to do is create an adjustment layer to convert everything to black and white. Easy enough, I'm gonna put a black and white adjustment layer on top, and I'm also deleting the mask on this adjustment layer. That's not necessarily a part of this process, but I just like to delete any masks that I'm not using. Now, from here, the effect is gonna require three more layers, but I'm gonna put them in a little bit out of order, only because I think it's more important to convey the logic of how this effect works. So let's say we want to apply a grainy gradient map effect with three colors in it. We know for sure that we need to break the image into just three colors. So we can do that in a very straightforward way using a posterize adjustment layer set to three. That's going to give us black, white, and 50% gray. And the way posterize works, it's looking at this shading in the image and it's giving us these nice clean distinctions right about here and somewhere around here where the values basically get light enough or dark enough to sort of fall into the next color category. And it gives us these big lumps of black and gray and white. So the next thing we're gonna do is introduce just a little bit of chaos or a little bit of randomness in where those cutoff points are. So for that, all we need to do is to apply some noise to the image before the posterize adjustment hits it. So under the posterize effect, a new layer, I'm gonna call it reticulation noise. And I wanna show you a really, really cool way to create a nice organic noise pattern. You'll just have to trust me for a minute. This is gonna work way better than regular old Photoshop noise. I'll solo out this layer so we can see how it's built. First, I need to fill this layer with solid black. So I'm gonna hit D to set my colors to default, then option delete to fill with the foreground color black. And then I'm gonna create the noise using a filter in the filter gallery but when you're using the filter gallery, the results depend on what your foreground and background colors are set to. And in this case, I wanna flip the colors from the default. I'm gonna hit X. So white is the foreground color and black is the background. Then we're gonna go filter, filter gallery. And the effect I'm gonna use is reticulation. Now, even though the filter gallery has some pretty cheesy effects in here, take a look at the noise pattern that this reticulation filter creates on just a solid black. It almost looks a little like something called a reaction diffusion pattern, although I doubt Photoshop would hide something that sophisticated in the filter gallery. Anyways, it's that nice organic quality that's gonna give us a really, really friendly kind of noise. I'm gonna set the density right in the middle at 25. That's gonna give us the maximum amount of noise. On a solid black layer, the foreground and background levels don't have any effect. So I'm gonna hit OK. And then I do need to do one more thing. Unfortunately, there's just no way to make this filter give us a nice neutral gray noise. And I don't want the noise to be biased toward the lights or toward the darks. So I'm going to apply a levels adjustment and I'm gonna put the gamma or the midpoint right where the peak of these values is at 0.35. Okay, so if I were to check the levels again, you can see that's giving us a noise that sits right in that gray area. Then let's unsolo this layer and no special blending modes or anything. All I'm gonna do is just bring down the opacity on this noise layer to blend it into the image. Although let's put a star next to that. We're gonna talk about this blending mode in just a minute. But take a look at that. This is exactly what we were looking for. We're getting this really nice scattering of the black and white and gray values. And to be clear on what's happening here, those cutoff points that the poster eyes was picking up on, now because the image has kind of a random scattering of noise in it, those posterized cutoff points are just creating these bigger noisy scattered kind of random shapes. 
And the more noise we introduce, the more the light and dark values are gonna get scattered around and we can control just how grainy we want this grain shaded effect to be. Now, quick side note, we created the noise using reticulation, but if I were to have just used regular Photoshop noise with a little bit of blur on it, it would look like this. Noise and a little blur, it's a perfectly valid approach to creating a grain shaded noisy texture, but just look at how much more natural and organic the reticulation noise is. In fact, if I take this reticulation noise layer and scale it up, we get an even more dramatic effect, but it's still kind of easy on the eyes. And I think it actually looks really cool when you get this grain pattern really nice and large. Okay, last step in the process. So thanks to the posterize adjustment, even though the image has all this textured shading in it, it still is only composed of three values. As a matter of fact, if I temporarily put a levels adjustment on top, this is just for our reference, you can see we've got black pixels, white pixels, and 50% gray pixels. So it follows that we can put a gradient map adjustment layer on top. And if we assign values to the 0% mark, 50% mark, and 100% mark, we're gonna get values that map directly on to our three colors. So we've got a three color grainy gradient map adjustment. All right, so what if we take the posterize up to four levels? Well, now we've got values at 0%, 33%, 66%, and 100%, and that doesn't exactly line up with our gradient map, although we could adjust it to make the values match that if we wanted. But let's go ahead and take posterize up to five levels. So now we have values in the image at zero, 25%, 50%, 75%, and 100%. Let's adjust the gradient map to match those values. We've already got zero, 50, and 100. Let's add another color at 25 and another color at 75. Okay, that's it. That's the setup. We've got a five color noisy gradient map. And I've actually built out a bunch of these five color gradient maps that make a nice starting point for color combinations. I'll include a link below to these if you wanna download a set of gradient presets. Then the opacity of the reticulation noise is gonna make the colors blend together more or less. Now, notice one thing. When I bring the opacity of the noise past a certain point, it's scattering the colors and the gradients so much that it can even push the solid blacks or the solid whites into the next color. Do you know what I mean? We're getting blue noise all the way in the solid blacks and yellow noise all the way in the solid whites. That's kind of fine in this case, but in some cases you might want to preserve the solid blacks and whites. So here would be a better example, an image with a solid black background. And if I apply all the same layers, black and white adjustment, reticulation noise, posterize, and the gradient map. Now the grain effect looks cool on the image, but it's so strong that it's pushing some blue speckles all the way into our nice black background. So optionally, if we wanna preserve the solid blacks and solid whites, we can change the reticulation noise layer to use a different blending mode. And the preferred blending mode here is gonna be soft light. Soft light is gonna apply the noise in the most even way all the way through the gray values while leaving the blacks and whites alone, as opposed to overlay mode, for example, which would apply the noise on more of a curve, giving us a lot of grain right in the middle, but not so much in the shadows and highlights. So with the noise, two options here, normal mode if you want the noise to apply all the way through the blacks and whites, soft light mode if you want to preserve solid blacks and whites. All right, that's the whole recipe. That's it for now. I'll include a link below if you want to download this set of five color gradient presets. Makes it easy to try out some different color palettes. I hope you guys enjoy experimenting with this. More on the way from the Texture Labs channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.